Oh hi, thanks for watching my video. So if you watched my Brandy Broke video, you'll know that I recently reinstalled The Sims 2 and it's got me feeling all nostalgic. So I've been trying to recreate the magic a little bit in The Sims 4 by bringing back the beloved characters from Pleasant View. If you'd like to watch the Brandy Broke video where I recreate her and her home in The Sims 4 whilst going through the history of the Broke family, then you can click on the link in the white box above now. Otherwise, Let's talk about the Pleasant family. So we'll just touch on um, the members of the family one by one. So first of all, there's the mum, Mary Sue. She's a very career oriented Sim who is very focused on her job and getting that next promotion. In fact, in one of the teaser thumbnails for the Pleasant family, you can see her on her phone, presumably doing something work related while her family are in the background, suggesting that for Mary Sue, Work comes first and foremost. In the same picture, we can see Daniel is feeling his relationship with his wife drifting away because he is clearly very frustrated by the lack of woohoo. And you can also see their twins, Lilith and Angela, at each other's throats. But let's focus on Daniel for now. So the twins' dad and Mary Sue's husband, Daniel, is pretty frustrated in his marriage because his wife isn't putting out enough. And he actually has the romance aspiration in The Sims 2, so really, married life wasn't going to be best suited for a sim like him anyway. And then there are the twins, Lilith and Angela, a couple of rowdy teens who are always at each other's throats. And we'll be talking about them a bit more in a sec, but for now, let's just rewind the clock slightly, though, and touch on the roots of the Pleasant family. So they first appear in The Sims 1, obviously not the same as they do in The Sims 2 because The Sims games do follow a timeline with the exception of The Sims 4. So it's only really Daniel who makes an appearance in The Sims 1 and at this point he's just a child and he lives with his parents and his younger sister. Then in The Sims 3, which is after The Sims 1 but before The Sims 2, you can actually see Daniel and Mary Sue together as a young couple who are on their honeymoon and at this point very much in love. Oh how times change eh? Anyway, back to current times, and by that I mean Sims 2 times. So we did touch on a few marital issues and troubles in paradise with Daniel and Mary Sue, so let's dig a little bit more into that. So Mary Sue is career obsessed, and when you start the game, you can see that she's a hard worker and has progressed in her career. Aesthetically, she's got that businesswoman and boss babe written all over her. She's got quite a conservative look to her and her marriage really isn't top priority on her list. When you start the game, her and Daniel are not even in love with each other. However, if she performs a romantic interaction with Daniel, they will fall in love. Another thing you may have noticed when you start the game is an interesting pop-up that appears for Daniel regarding the maid. He is quite attracted to her, and if you check his relationships, you'll see that he has already acted on his impulses because he has a very high romantic relationship with her, so he's having a full-on affair. Not long after the game starts, everyone in the house will leave, so the twins go to school and Mary Sue goes to work, leaving Daniel home alone. This is until the maid automatically turns up for her daily shift, ready to put in a shift and get down to business. So basically, if you miss the hint in the relationship bar, then don't worry. The game will make sure you know very well that this affair is happening. And just a little nod to The Sims 2, which I did in the Broke video as well, but props to this game for having these storyline milestones included while you're playing. Now on this day, Mary Sue actually comes home from work early and catches Daniel cheating on her. Oh my god, the drama. And what happens from then on in terms of their marriage is up to you. But now let's talk about the twins, Lilith and Angela Pleasant. So we have Angela and Lilith. They are opposites of each other in every way possible. Angela is a good sim who does well at school. She wears pretty floral dresses. Her name means angel. And then there's Lilith, a rebellious teen who was recently arrested, failing at school, and whose name translates to demon. Angela is referred to as Miss Popularity in the game, whereas Lilith is referred to not so favourably. The game suggests that from a young age, Lilith was treated differently to Angela, which explains why they are so divided and often come to blows with each other. There are a few small giveaways that suggest that Angela was favoured over Lilith. For example, they are twins, which means they have the same birthday. However, in the pictures from the family memories, you can see Angela blowing out her birthday candles with her parents, whereas Lilith is just sat in the other room by herself. Angela has a computer in her room, Lilith doesn't, and Angela grew up well in all of her life stages up until this point, 
But Lilith didn't. She wasn't potty trained or taught to walk and talk like her sister was, so the upbringing was considerably different to Angela's. Their parents have positive memories of Angela's growing up well, but negative memories of Lilith growing up badly. This probably explains why Angela has a good relationship with her parents, but Lilith does not. The repeated acts of favouritism towards Angela has put Lilith's relationship with her parents under some serious strain. And when you start playing the game, you'll notice that the twins hate each other. They have a terrible relationship, and one of the first interactions they do is slap each other around the face. The love lives of Angela and Lilith are pretty interesting too, really, because on one hand, you've got Angela, the goody two-shoes angelic girl who's in a relationship with Dustin Broke, who comes from a poor family that lives in a trailer park. He's a rebellious teen with bad grades and bad relationship with Angela's dad. And then you've got Lilith, a rebel in her own right who grew up without the same opportunities as her more favoured sister and ended up doing terrible at school and got arrested. And she's in a relationship with Dirk Dreamer, who's a general good egg from a good family and is doing well at school too. There's not really much in terms of context to understand why these couples are together, as they do seem pretty opposite from one another. And on face value, you'd actually think that the girls would be better suited to each other's boyfriends. But I guess that's another thing that's up to you as the player to decide. I think there could be some truth in a theory um, around Lilith and Angela with a, a jealousy situation because Dustin is more suited to Lilith, although he's going out with Angela. And when they meet, they actually have a higher attraction to one another than Angela does with Dustin. And I kind of feel like there's a chance that that was done purposely as yet another dig to Lilith to kind of say, well, you're already jealous of your sister for everything else. This is just another thing to add to the list, you know, that it's another thing that Angela has that Lilith doesn't have. Who knows? The Pleasant family live in quite a big house and they are the second richest family in Pleasant View, second to the Goths. However, their house is quite empty. I noticed this when I tried to recreate the same house in The Sims 4. I tried to keep it as like for like as possible, but then the roofing got involved and it was a struggle, so I'm not going to lie. But I did think uh, I did an okay job to making it look as similar as possible. Most of it looks pretty much the same as the house in The Sims 2. I made a couple of changes, like I gave the girls a couple extra things in their bedrooms. Like instead of Angela having the computer, I gave it to Lilith because I feel like her interests are more suited to having one. Like she's meant to be really into the paranormal and I think she's into gaming as well. So that's why she has the computer. Whereas Angela has a dressing table instead because I feel like she's probably more concerned about her appearance out of the two of them. I'd love to hear in the comments uh, what you think of the Pleasant family. And if uh, you think any of these theories are right, whether... You think Angela and Dustin are only together just to rub it in uh, in Lilith's face? Who knows? Who knows? I think there could be some truth to it. In terms of the uh, the lore and the storytelling, it made me feel a bit sad doing uh, the research on this video. Well, and I think I mentioned this in the Brandy Broke video as well. I'll probably mention it in every one that I do because <laughs> um, it's pissing me off. But, you know, when you look into the history of the families and you see that they're referenced, like, for example, the Pleasant family, it's not just that they're in The Sims 2. And The Sims 2 was the first game that I played. I didn't really um, get too involved with The Sims 1. And I didn't spend as much time playing The Sims 3 as I did The Sims 2. So I didn't even know um, that the Pleasant couple were in The Sims 3 until I looked into it for this video. So when I saw that, you know, they are referenced in The Sims 1, 2 and 3, I was impressed. I just really like the uh, the consistency and it, you know, it's a form of storytelling, the fact that you can follow the family. And I can see how people that were potentially following all of the families, you know, including The Sims 1, Sims 2, Sims 3, they were probably quite excited about finding out what was going to happen next. And then we got The Sims 4. And I don't want to just shit on The Sims 4 because I actually do think it's a really good game. I think there are so many really good things about The Sims 4. But man, I just, they really let those characters down. It was such a waste of time putting all of that effort in for the other Sims games to just go nowhere with it. It just kind of feels like um, any of the characters that they bring back, they're just doing it for the sake of novelty. Like the, um, 
you know, when they brought back the Pleasant Twins, I know that the Pleasant Twins are technically in The Sims 4. Um, they came with the Discover University pack, but to be honest, I just kind of ignore that because even though there, you know, there is reference to their character, I mean, they're doing the degrees and stuff, it's not like there's anyone else from the family in their family tree or anything like that, so I don't really count them as real characters. I don't know, I just think it's such a shame, and I hope that, um, I hope that The Sims 4 hasn't started a trend now with this kind of thing. I hope that when The Sims 5 comes along, they actually do continue the story. Or even if they don't want to continue the story, they at least have the next logical step in the timeline. Like, I hope it's set at some point where we can see, you know, even if it's like the goth couple as elders or just something, you know? Finish what you started, Sims 4. Finish what you started. Well, not Sims 4, because... You didn't do that. EA. Finish what you started, EA. But uh, yeah, that is uh, bringing the Pleasant View family into The Sims 2. As I mentioned, I have recently installed it. It's got me feeling all nostalgic. So I'm going to try and recreate everyone from Pleasant View and put them into Willow Creek. I have already done this with the Broke family. So far, that's the only other video I have on here. I probably won't do one for every single family because I think some people I've already put in there. Um, but I'll probably do a video when I've finished and like give you a bit of a tour and show you all the characters. But I think next up, I will probably do the Dreamer family. So yeah, there we go. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.